Welcome to the part 4 of lecture 3. In this part, we will implement the same analysis that we did with the Python, but now we will use R to implement the same analysis so that we get a good understanding of how to implement the same analysis using both R as well as Python. So often time, many students ask me whether to learn Python or R. I always tell them that one should be program language agnostic in terms of implementing data science project because even when 20 years back when I was a student at that time R was a very new language and SAS was much more established language and Python was not even there. It was more popular in the engineering community, but not in the stat or math community. Then eventually what we found, R become very popular. SAS and R become sort of a market leader in the statistics and analytics domain. And eventually Python become much more dominant player following by R and other languages. So as the technology changes, the language keep changing. New language comes today, which is a new language or frontier language become obsolete. So one should be very language agnostic and one should have the attitude to learn new language quickly. That is one of the reason in MSc Data Science program of CMI, we have a full lang course on programming with Python. But though it's with Python, the course is sort of a agnostic to Python. And it these programming concepts are actually true for any language. So you should focus on understanding the concepts of the programming rather than the language itself. If you understand the basic structures of the programming concepts, then you will see that you can be very easily comfortable with any language that comes with. So let's focus on now the how we do the empty curse data analysis using R. So here, empty curse data comes um, as a with the base data set. So I just use the attach function to have it on the R environment. And if I do the head empty cars, it gives us the data set as it is. So first six rows of the data. This is the first column is the miles per gallon, then cylinder displacement, horsepower, weight, all these values are there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the weight against miles per gallon. And if I, I have taken PCH, the point, you know, uh, how the point would look like, I give a value 20 here. The label of the X axis is weight and the label of the Y axis is miles per gallon and color is purple. So that's how it looks like. And if you give a grid color with gray and LTY1, then it, put, it will put a nice grid in it. So clearly, as we, have, we know that the data has a negative relationship with both between weight and the miles per gallon or the fuel efficiency and the weight of the car has a negative relationship. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to implement the simple linear regression of, of a modeling miles per gallon as a function of weight, where miles per gallon is equal to A plus B times weight plus error. So miles per gallon is Y and weight is our X. So it is like Y equal to A plus B X plus error. So N is the number of 
rows that we have in the data set so we have 32 samples so that we that is why we have number of 32 rows now I'm going to define my X matrix so if I just do the head so the first column of the X matrix is intercept so all the values are 1 and the next is column is the weight why I am assigning as miles per gallon so s is transpose of x times x or x transpose x i'm computing and put it into s so if you this is the x transpose x matrix it's a two by two matrix and then solve x trans of s will give me the x transpose x inverse and then times x transpose y will give me the beta hat the OLS formula so if I write that so this is the beta hat and this is the beta not hat but it is the beta 1 hat now I am going to implement the same model using LM which is there in the stats package stats package so fit m1 from the stats package if you, you call the LM and this is the formula you give the mild, you model the miles per gallon as a function of weight and then if you run the coefficient of fit 1 now you can see that this values this, these values we estimated using the formula x transpose x inverse x transpose y the OLS formula and LM gives us the exact OLS implementation so however the advantage of using LM of the stats package it gives much more than simple beta hat and for example if you write summary of fit m1 and run that you will see there are a lot of additional analysis is given so estimates 37.285126 so it is being rounded up and three mi minus 5.344 so that is being 345 also along with it it is given the standard error the t value so if you divide the 37.2851 by 1.87 you will get the t value of 19.858 and the p value is also given similarly weight is negative 5.3445 if you divide that by the standard error 0.5591 you will get minus 9.559 and similarly p-value is calculated and given uh, p-value is really small minus 9 is far away from 0 so we can say that weight has a statistically significant effect on miles per gallon also it has given the residual standard error of 3.046 multiple r square is 75% adjusted r square is 74.46 percent so that means weight alone can explain the around 75 percent variability of the miles per gallon itself so weight of a car is a very important feature in terms of predicting the fuel efficiency of the car So you can use the coefficient of sums to get the this particular table to take it out and then from this coefficient of sums if you I want the second column to restore in this so that it gives me the standard error of beta hat so this is the standard error of beta hat now I give a one because uh, I will again use the exact formula to calculate the standard error of beta hat so that you will see 
the formula that I taught you in the theoretical lectures in the theory uh, will match exactly with the LM procedure. Now I am going to plot extract the residuals of 32 values of the residuals these residuals are actual minus the predicted so if you square them up take the sum and divide that by n minus 2 that gives you sigma hat so what is your sigma hat sigma has 3.05882 and if you plot the sum so 3.05 Residual standard error is 3.046 and sigma hat is 3.04 if you round it up to 6. So sigma hat is your residual standard error. Now you see how you calculate the standard error. The standard error is sigma hat square times x transpose x inverse the diagonal element of the x transpose x inverse and then you take the square root of that so I have taken the solve is is give is going to give me the x transpose x inverse you take the diagonal elements of that here is the diagonal element of that and then multiply it with the sigma square and take the square root of that now if you calculate that this is the standard error of the beta hat as I taught you in the class now if I R bind with the previously now the first one is the uh, standard error of beta hat using the LM procedure and second row is the standard error of beta hat using the direct formula that I taught you in the theory so and these are exactly matching so the theory that I taught is also being implemented in the LM so that is we are basically checking whether our theory is matching with the implementations in the stack package next I'm going to implement the straight line linear regression on the uh, plot the scatter plot that we have done over the weight and miles per gallon so this is the plot that we already have done and then if we just write a AB line with fit M1 with color sky blue and LWD then you see that this line will be drawn through the points if you zoom click on the zoom it will become a bigger and it will give you a much better look so let me close this and let's go back we look for the different model evaluations so from the sum if you you can extract r square 0.7528 or 75.28 percent you can extract some adjusted r square and if you just write the sum if you draw the sum then you will see that adjusted r square 7446 so this is what we had after rounding off it becomes 7446 and multiple r square is 7528 and here that is what we got multiple r square 0.7528 so MPG hat from the fit M1 we can extract all the fitted values Y hat and we can put it into MPG hat and we can plot the Y versus Y hat or the actual versus the predicted and we can do that so on the X axis we plot the actual miles per gallon on the y-axis we plot the predicted miles per gallon and then if we put a grid on that so it looks little better next we are going to model the miles per gallon not only as a function of weight we are also going to model it as a function of horsepower so 
all we do from the stats package we call the lm function and we put model the miles per gallon as a function of weight plus horsepower and we run this then sum2 will give you this is the so we see this is the intercept we see the weight negative 3.87 the estimates actually being changed a bit t value is negative 6.129 and p value is still small horsepower is has a estimate negative 0 0.03 with a standard error 0 0.009 with a t value negative 3.519 r square is 0.8268 or 82 percent and adjusted r square 8148 and some residual sum of square is 2.59 suppose this is the model we choose to work with and we want to predict the miles per gallon for a prototype car for which weight is 3 ton and horsepower is 120 so what I did I defined a data frame by taking the empty curse first row of the empty curse data set if I run it so I've just taken the first row of the empty curse data set and the provide the row names as prototype now again if I write it now mass the rx4 is being replaced by the prototype now the weight is 2.62 but this is the weight of this previous mass the rx4 uh, we replace it by 3 and the horsepower by 120 so let's run that and if you do that now you can see weight is 3 and horsepower is 120 now if you run that so predicted value predict equal to fit m2 with this model with the new data as a prototype and that prediction is 21.78 so the predicted miles per gallon for a prototype car with weight 3 ton and horsepower 120 uh, will be 21.78 so we can put it into the prototype data frame and miles per gallon is 2.78 21.781 now what we are going to do we know that prediction minus 1 point that predict the miles per gallon follows a normal distribution so we are assuming now here that miles per gallon follow a normal distribution with b0 plus b1 times weight plus b2 times horsepower times a square now this model this is the model we fit here right this is the model we fit here now this model gives us the prediction 21.78 but there will be a bit of a variability that variability will be more is being captured by the sigma square or a square so prediction minus 1.96 times the sigma similarly predicted value plus 1.96 times sigma will give us the 95 percent confidence interval for the prediction so which gives us 60 16.69 and 26.86 and the prediction is 21.78 so we can say that a prototype car with 3 tons weight and you know 120 horsepower uh, will have a predicted miles per gallon will be 21.781 but the variability could be somewhere between 16.6 to 626.9 somewhere in that range so it is a bit of a large variability but still uh, there is a room to improve upon next 
we are going to explore the relationship between the horsepower and the miles per gallon so we plot this the relationship between horsepower and miles per gallon this is the on the x-axis we plot the horsepower on the y-axis we plot the miles per gallon and there is an inverse relationship but looks like there is a non-linearity is there so we can plot the grid then so first thing we can do is um, fit the miles per gallon only function of horsepower and horsepower do, do have strong significant effect but the adjusted r square and the r square is only around the range of 60 percent so horsepower only can explain about 60 percent of the variability of miles per gallon whereas the weight can explain much more so this is some important point to be noted now because there is a sort of a quadratic variability is there what i'm going to do i'm going to incorporate the horsepower square hp square and in r you can do it by putting an indicator function with the hp square i function with hp square and you fit that model and summer now after fitting six uh, seven I mean a quadratic term now multiple R square has jumped from 60% to 75% adjusted R square has jumped from 58% to 73% so about 15% jump we are seeing just by incorporating the quadratic terms in the model so what we can do is what we are, I'm going to do I'm going to I want to draw a curve here how it looks like so I'm going to gener define a x matrix with a hundred rows and three columns and the column names are intercept horsepower and the horsepower square so this is my x new and let me just write the x new you see the first column is all ones for the intercept parameters then second column is stands for horsepower and the third column stands for the horsepower square of the horsepowers now I extract the beta hat from the fitted model fitted models beta hat are intercept horsepower and horsepower square then x times beta hat will give me the predicted values okay and then I draw the line so here is the plotted line that's how we are seeing so optimal sort of a miles per efficiency we are seeing you know when the well when the horsepower is lower naturally efficiency will be higher then I'm going to find, fit the last model now horsepower and horsepower squared is the model and then we also know weight is another feature which has a strong impact on the miles per gallon so I'm going to put that variable as well and with that we got the model so basically the model is miles per gallon with horsepower horsepower square and the weight and that model is pretty much everything is significant with the multiple r square 85 percent and that just did r square 84.3 percent so this particular model we seems like has the highest r square in terms of multiple r square adjusted r square say settle down with this model suppose we decide okay we this is this looks like a reasonable model and we want to report it but before reporting as i said we want to check whether basic model assumptions about the residuals are reasonable or not so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to extract the residuals from the model and put it into a vector called e and look want to looks like a histogram 
if you look into the histogram histogram does not really look like very nice bell shaped normal distribution but at the same time you have to remember that the data set is very small only 32 samples are there so you have to be a bit careful in that way next i am going to fit the residual versus fitted values that gives us an idea if there is any pattern or anything we don't see any major pattern is emerging from it so it indicates that maybe the assumption of linearity is reasonable can't doubt that linear hyperplane assumption that this model that we fitted here we cannot really doubt that model here this model this is reasonable model we can think of next what we are going to do we are going to check the randomness in the residual for that we are going to call the ran tests and from the ran test we are going to implement the whatlets rank test and hypothesis alternate hypothesis is non randomness so the null hypothesis is that these errors are random and this bartles uh, ratio test gives us a p value 0 0.1973 which does not give us enough evidence to reject the null so we fail to reject the null and we stick to the null the null hypothesis is these residuals are random so we can stick to that next assumption is check the homoscedasticity for that we are going to call the brush pagan test brush pagan test is studentized brush pagan test for homoscedasticity this is the model and p value is 0 0.7037 and we can say that the null hypothesis is homoscedasticity the the, the the variability of the residuals are homoscedastic an alternative is it is not homoscedastic and we cannot reject the null we fail to reject the null so we can say that the data does not uh, data does looks like that assumption of homoscedasticity is okay finally we want to check the normality so first thing we are going to do we are going to plot a QQ plot with a QQ line in it and looks like these points are far from the QQ line so there could be some as from the histogram also we thought like you know we cannot really say it is a normal so we did a Kolmogorov Smirnov test one sample Kolmogorov Smirnov test tells us that P value is 0 0.05157. So, nor test for normality tells us that at 5% level of significance, we cannot really reject the null hypothesis. But P value is definitely very, very close to 0 0.05. And so, we have very, you know, little bit doubtful situation about the normality of the distribution of residuals so with this i will stop here and we will do this is a very small this is an introduction this is a starting of the you know class and this is the first hands-on with the r and python we did with the empty curse data set which has only 32 samples but eventually now we will move on to more and more larger data set with more and more difficult and different kinds of issues and uh, we will keep working on those new different issues so for now i'm going to stop for this week lecture stops here ends here see you in the next week wish you a happy weekend stay safe stay home